I started assembling my DSO-138 oscilloscope kit, and right at the first step, I already ran into some problems. There is a list of the resistors, and the resistors are packaged in a separate bag, so that is helpful. However, it turns out that uh, R11 is listed as one and a half kilo ohms, as well as R38. However, what you find in the bag are two 150 ohm resistors. I did do some research online and it turns out that uh, they have actually officially changed the value of R11 to 150 ohm. However, it does not say anything about R38, so I'm assuming that's a mistake that they made. So R11 is 150 ohms and for R38 up there I just used a one and a half kilo ohm resistor and I'm just gonna leave this uh, additional 150 ohm resistor unused. Some inductors called high frequency chokes in this instruction manual are the next step and at first I thought this might be trouble because they do look a lot like resistors but absolutely no problem number one they are in a separate bag they are not in the same bag as the resistors number two they are green not blue like the resistors and they are slightly bigger so I'd say this is pretty much idiot proof Continuing to follow along the instruction manual, soldering in the micro USB jack down here does require quite a bit of patience. As you can see, the pins are very, very close together. And I did use a higher wattage soldering iron to solder the ground connections because it's going to require quite a bit of heat since you are soldering the metal of the jack to the ground plane on the bottom. The tactile switches off to the side really aren't that much of a perfect fit. However, one way they do fit in better than the other way, so you're probably not going to get that wrong. And about two hours later, this is the finished main board. The display does have a protective film over it, but for some extra safety, I'm still keeping one of the plastic bags over it while doing the soldering. And that's all the soldering done. And aside from that little error right at the start, the manual has been quite helpful. So it's nice to have that. Some components that I did not use, um, we have that uh, 150 ohm resistor. We have those four feet. I'm not really sure if I'm going to need them, if I'm going to use them. And then there is uh, also this um, power input jack, which I am not going to need in the application that I have planned for this scope. And here it comes, the moment of truth. I already powered the main board without the display up once, as it says in the instruction manual, and checked the voltage output of the 3.3 volt regulator circuit, and it is 3.325 volts, so that's fine. So next it tells you to short a certain jumper, install the display, and power it up again. So that's what we're going to do. Here we go. Well, that looks good. Oh, it's flickering a bit, but it's only flickering on camera. We got that couple to ground, so let's, let's see. That was the wrong switch. Let's bring this over to AC. Actually, let's bring this over to DC. Touch the input, and, well, I do see something. Raise the sensitivity to maximum. Oh, yes, there we go. There we go. Uh, I guess this would... Uh, uh, 
there we go that's the time base right there with these push buttons okay well that reset button is somewhat uh, pointless it just simply restarts the whole thing I'll check some of the other voltages given in the instruction manual up here I checked all the relevant voltages and they tested fine, so I now have the input connected to the built-in test tone generator. 1 kilohertz at 3.3 volts, square wave. Looking at the screen, we are getting what we want. The next thing that you want to do is you want to adjust these trimmer capacitors according to the instructions given on the second page of the manual. I finished the adjustments. C4 ended up making quite a difference, so that was definitely necessary. It's basically kind of the same thing that uh, you do on an oscilloscope probe when you do the uh, compensation, looking at a square wave. C6 didn't really make much of a difference, so I just kind of left it at a random position. <laughs> oh well. So there it is. It's really quite easy to operate. As you can see, we have the input sensitivity right there. That's set using these two switches. We've got the input coupling, DC, AC, or ground. That's done with that switch. Little imperfection, as you can see, indicated by this arrow. I don't have an offset set up internally in the scope, but still, if I ground out the input, there is a slight offset. There is the time base. There is the trigger mode, rising edge or falling edge trigger. This is the trigger level indicated by this little arrow. That's the trigger level up there is an actual voltage. This indicates the total length of the input signal that's being recorded and then this fat part in the middle indicates the window that you're looking at. And then this is running or hold. And adjusting all of this is quite easy. You have the select button down there and whatever is selected is highlighted in blue. So, you can see now I have the window highlighted, offset highlighted, and that's the time base, and you can adjust that using the plus and minus buttons. That's the trigger mode, auto, normal, single. And that's where this uh, window feature comes in handy, because you can now go and you can uh, move this around so if you have one single event that you want to uh, look at, you can. It's somewhat slow to respond. As you can see, you can move this around and take a look at certain portions of the signal. And then the OK button up above, as you can see, since we have this in singular, we can make this trigger once. If we select our automatic trigger again, the OK button puts this to the running mode or back to hold if we want to hold the signal. So this really does have all the basic functions that you would expect from a digital scope. I'm not going to do any further tests regarding precision and accuracy and so on and so forth. I just wanted to have a cheap and simple and small and portable device just to do some basic checks on signals and that's exactly what this thing enables me to do. I want to run this off a 9 volt battery and then this should be nice and portable. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.